Good morning. Uh, my talk today is going to be about um, about technology practice and uh, the impact evaluation framework. Actually, it's a story on how a lot of projects together can have a common ground. So it's uh, the outcomes. I'm not going to discuss any case study because tomorrow we have a discussion about case study. Today we're going to discuss uh, some clustering activities that we had to do within the Nature Project with other projects that already implement nature-based solutions and try to find a common ground of assessment of the various um, challenges that involve uh, nature-based solutions. And I will explain what is this impact evaluation framework. It's a framework to evaluate, to assess nature-based solutions. Uh, and uh, it's called also Eclipse Framework if for, for those that who don't know it. So uh, what we would like to do is to go together, actually, to have a cluster integration, to learn from each other, to enable synergies, to wide our networks, and exchange and communicate and disseminate. So uh, this is the, the, the goal from uh, European Commission in to act uh, as big nature with the other projects that uh, implement nature-based solutions. And uh, uh, the added value is to, uh, to have a common evidence base in order to, uh, if, you, if you have different projects and you have different evaluation frameworks, then the outcomes cannot be compared. So uh, the European Commission wanted from this work to have a common evidence base to allow, uh, to, allow uh, to come from one scale to another because you uh, would have exams or examples from different scales and to engage uh, the MPS community. So uh, this is the projects that are now uh, funded by the European Commission on nature-based solutions. Uh, I don't mention Think Nature because it's uh, a coordination and support action. It supports all the work that has been done by the other projects. It's NIAD, Nature for Cities, I think was presentation yesterday for the platform on Nature for Cities. Connecting Nature, Urban Green Up, Una Lab, and Grow Green, it's a, oh, sorry. It's a in innovation action. And then there's a new goal, Clever Cities, uh, Urbac, whatever, Open Operandum, Connect, Physicos, Green, Clearing House, this is all the projects that were involved in this and are all continuously involved in this effort. So uh, the Commission started a set of four initial task forces. The first one, task force means a work, a common, uh, a common work among the various projects. So we have a first task force of, on common knowledge repository and how we manage the data. The second uh, task force that I'm going to talk about is the task uh, for impact evaluation framework and how we evaluate and what key performance indicators we have. Then we have a, a task force on governance, new governance and business models. As you mentioned before, we need policy, legislation, and also business to uh, promote MBS. And then there is also a task force on communication and dissemination. There are two uh, added ones, the task force on co-creation processes, the uh, task force on how we engage stakeholders, and there is another one on uh, hydrometeorological risk that it was a specific NBS among specific problem, uh, projects that were uh, focusing on uh, hydrometeorological risks. Now, this is the framework, the Eclipse framework that uh, was discussed uh, in uh, FP7 projects, and then we started the Horizon projects. Uh, the task, uh, the Eclipse has specific challenges that are related to nature-based solutions that I will talk about in a few minutes, and then presents all indicators that exist in the bibliography that are related with these challenges. And, uh, 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 I'm, I'm going to talk about the challenges because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, so uh, there are 10 challenges indicated from the Eclipse Working Group, but also there is a discussion for more that are not yet uh, uh, consolidated. The first uh, challenge is uh, that uh, relates to nature-based solutions is climate change mitigation adaptation, of course. 
then uh, this is uh, and then after this you will see uh, how we measure this okay then we have uh, water management coastal resilience green space management including biodiversity air and ambient quality urban regeneration how we regenerate urban sites then we go to governance so we talk about participatory planning and governance then social justice and cohesion public health and well-being and new economic opportunities and green jobs and there are, of this umbrella we have a lot of indicators for uh, but what we did in this task force is we tried, among the projects that uh, presented earlier, to have some common ground and common indicators that some of the projects use to assess the uh, nature-based solutions implementation. And you see here that for the first uh, uh, for the first challenge, which is climate change mitigation, we actually <coughs> agreed that most projects, of course. Uh, we uh, the, the most projects look at tons of carbon removed and also decrease in temperature. But there are other indicators that I wanted to discuss with you: uh, total carbon restored in vegetation, energy savings from buildings. This is not assessed by the nature-based solutions, not mainly. Heat risk, heat wave risks, and measures of human comfort, which some of them is assessed, assessed by the nature-based solutions projects. And then there are some more. I'm not going to talk all this list. You have uh, uh, you have the presentation in uh, your uh, files. I would so, so you see that uh, uh, there is a, a variant of indicators. For example, increase in shadow shifters. So if you increase vegetation, then you improve temperature, and then you increase the, uh, the shadow shifters. Uh, the temperature of the land, surface temperature. There is also uh, surface reflectance soil temperature at specific depth if it's measured uh, total carbon stored on soil this is additional metrics that can be used to for the challenge of climate change mitigation and adaptation and this has to do mainly with uh, uh, cities and areas of uh, reducing temperature then we have water management where these three indicators were the most the ones mostly discussed but by all uh, NBS projects which is runoff coefficient in relation to precipitation quantity, which is very important. Roof peak reduction and increase, uh, uh, sorry, uh, load peak reduction and increase in time to peak. And water quality and chemical indicators, uh, reduction in metal pollutants, etc. There are some additional metrics here. You also, metrics are added. For example, uh, share of green spaces in zone of daisy floats. How many greenery exist in these areas? Uh, population exposed to cloud risk, which is also a social aspect. And uh, uh, then we close with water management. And also some more metrics here. Now, about the green space management, how we uh, manage the green, the, three indicators that were mainly also discussed by nature-based solution projects in these clustering activities. First one is accessibility. How uh, easy we go and what's how much time we need to go to the green spaces. How these green spaces are distributed uh, per total surface per capita, per upper capita. And how these are connected. If you need to go from one green space to another green space, you pass through roads that you cannot walk. So there is not the green space management is not very well handled. There's other other metrics: uh, sustainability of green areas, quality of elderly people that visit uh, these green areas, pollinator species increase. If you increase green uh, areas, then you increase pollinators perceptions of, connecti of connectivity and mobility, and then also recreational if these green spaces are used for activities to recreate, for recreational activities and uh, uh, cultural and social events. And more here. Uh, now we go to air quality. Two, where again, uh, you see there is a, a whole list of indicators, but uh, 
Uh, what I put in black here is the ones that were mainly discussed by all NPS projects and are the, the most dominant ones. The first one is special indicators, pollutant flux per square meter per year. We can see various pollutants measured by various cities that we can get some indicators. And no uh, 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 non-spatial indicators, annual amount of pollutants captured or removed by vegetation. For air quality, I'm sure that everybody knows that there is a lot, a lot of metrics, different metrics and different ways to measure air pollution, and uh, this is not something new. Uh, but here it's air quality related to uh, implementation of nature in cities. How, uh, if we do an MBS project, as previously discussed by Eric, how this changes the air quality. Now, Urban regeneration, how we change our urban environment, regenerate abandoned spaces, what has been done with that. So, first one is distribution of NBS green space accessibility, perceived accessibility, and land use change in green space configuration, how the land is used and how areas are regenerated. Also, it's, uh, uh, this is for urban regeneration, and we go to participatory planning and governance. There is no more on that. So we have uh, openness of participatory process. Uh, how, uh, uh, how the, how the, how the, the what's this initiation of community members to be actively involved in this process. How this decision making process is trust is, is being trusted, and uh, how the decision makers take into account these processes and also involvement of women or gender equality in this process. And uh, uh, we have a social justice and social cohesion is uh, participation in different social groups. Provision. This is measured, this is metrics, specific methods by questionnaires and we get, uh, you get uh, quantitative results and not something that it's general. Uh, provision of cultural and health services accommodating different group needs. Social justice of employment and economic opportunity and capabilities, belonging, impact, meaning this, I don't know how they measure, I haven't seen any, it's not my expertise actually, the social aspect. And then you have uh, uh, quality of social relations, trust between neighbors, solidarity between neighbors, tolerance and respect, and safety, that is both objective and subjective, and sense of place, sense of uh, attachment and identity, if you feel safe to go to a, a space. And then we have, uh, I'm, I'm finishing, we have two more. Uh, public health and well-being is something very well discussed nowadays in the European uh, uh, Commission for Cities, because uh, people, for, people as citizens are moving to cities, there are a lot of problems in infrastructure, in social aspects, in employment, in health issues. So uh, to improve public health and well-being through nature and through public spaces is something that is uh, very important and is discussed a lot. Uh, the first one is to uh, create active life uh, lifestyles, so to use these public spaces for recreation. And uh, of course, it it's also increases uh, the, the sense of belonging and uh, that you, this space is something that can be used by a lot of people. And also you meet people, so it's also some kind of social um, inter in, uh, social um, interaction. Then we have perceived well-being, uh, happiness, and perceived overall health by the citizens themselves. Do they change their, uh, uh, how they feel when they visit public spaces that uh, look like nature? Do uh, have the different feelings? Do they feel happier? Then. Uh, uh, air quality is also something that is really related to uh, public health and well-being. If, uh, if your nose is uh, irritated and your, your eyes you cannot see, then I think that nobody feels healthy and well and uh, uh, healthy. Also noise and uh, the quality of urban green, if the urban green is well maintained and uh, if it's a nice place. Other things to consider is uh, how this uh, this, uh, there are studies showing that if you visit public spaces with greenery and uh, parks, this uh, reduces the health, uh, some health uh, issues that we have. 
especially depression. And then uh, a prevalence, incidence, morbidity and mortality of virus diseases and prevalence in this mobility of chronic uh, stress and levels of aggressiveness and violence. This is some things that, are things, things that are considered that are linked with open public spaces that are regenerated for, with nature. Uh, I'm not going to go uh, all these details because there is a lot of physical health, other uh, mental health, uh, for example, Alzheimer's disorders, uh, uh, dementia, other mental disorders that can uh, it's been seen that is related with uh, areas, public spaces with nature. And uh, finally, how MBS change economic opportunities and if they create green jobs. I think I'm going before the time because we're going faster. <laughs> we have time for discussion there. So it's a number of tax deductions of subsidized related to MBS, change in uh, property and land price, if jobs are created and uh, if is some retail activity created of, uh, uh, in, in these areas. Uh, also there is uh, avoided cost of run of treatment, proper embeddlement, private finance attracted to the MBS side because of uh, these new projects. So, uh, how, what we've been done in this uh, task force as a whole, we studied all these key performance indicators that you saw here. We analyzed which one of these are related to the various projects. And after that, of course, instead of saying that this is the indicator and you have to measure that way, there is a development of uh, a common methodology and tools to assess these common indicators by the various projects. So uh, instead of saying that you measure, for example, tons of carbon emissions reduction, also we have to say how we measure that, what is the methodology, what are the tools we use, how we measure it, and then uh, this can be comparable with other projects around uh, Europe or also outside Europe. And uh, for this, also a, a handbook is developed with guidelines on indicator selector or monitor, uh, selection of monitoring schemes and monitoring measurement methods. And uh, there is also a presentation of case studies from all the ongoing projects and summary of best practices of measuring these things. Uh, tomorrow we will see a case study here that we have uh, the field uh, analysis here. And we will see together if how, how we can use these key performance indicators to assess uh, variants or scenarios to change our cities. So this is all from me. We have time for discussion if you wish. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, I, uh, um, I work on the, um, the nature project yes. in Glasgow. And um, I just wondered if you had any advice about collecting the information for the indicators because there's a huge suite of indicators and very little resources to collect the information. Have you got any um, ideas about how we might be able to face that challenge? Uh, yes, actually, uh, uh, to, to tell you the story, uh, in the beginning uh, with uh, the MBS process, there wasn't any budget aside for these common activities, although it's very interesting for all the projects. All the projects, of course, are focusing on the MBS implementation and not on the clustering activities. After a while, and also, uh, especially with Connecting Nature, you had a very a big variety with social uh, indicators and um, not so technical indicators, which is quite difficult. So we, from, your, from your project, we had uh, um, Adina, Dimitru, oh, yes, yeah. okay. she was uh, your representative to uh, the task forces and I'll, oh, actually she was responsible for quite a few uh, challenges to create this common indicators ground. So yes, we had a lot. Okay, I'll speak to Adina then. Okay, okay. say hello from me. Hello, hello. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It's really very interesting. Although I'm not very uh, really working right now, 
And deliverable that is uh, uh, all this information is provided because I can see that we can use these indicators in other pilot cases. But I would like to tell you that there is a hard book that will be taken out from this work and will be distributed uh, widely. I think it's not yet ready, but uh, there is a lot of work being done on uh, the reporting of all these works. We understand that includes some. Uh, intellectual property rights because sometimes all the projects do not want to release what actually they, they did before they are ready to do it okay uh, but uh, also in the, in the thing next to handbook you can uh, when it's released you can find some information about uh, the impact evaluation framework and how to evaluate uh, nature based solutions and also there will be another handbook from the task forces Uh, thank you very much. Um, are there any case studies? You, you presented a lot of indicators across 10 challenges. Uh, are there any case studies where an effort has been made to, to measure as many as possible in one place? And if so, what is the most amount of indicators that one project has been able to measure? No, because each project has developed its own strategy before starting this. So I don't remember one project or one case study having all of this. No. Sorry, add to that. Yeah, in Glasgow actually, um, we are having to look at the whole suite of indicators that are being developed because the um, solution that we are working on is a policy-based solution which will cover the whole city. So we expect to have a huge range of different types of nature-based solutions happening across the city. So we need to look at basically all the indicators that are available. So, but we're at an early stage, so uh, I can't offer any more advice at this point. But yeah, in the next year or so, we will have to work on a lot more indicators. So, okay, may I ask you something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I think that if you go and visit the, the Connecting Nature website, you will find uh, a lot of information about, uh, and also if you follow them in Twitter. Because they're tweeting a lot. <laughs> Anybody else? Just a quick question. When does the handbook, when is the handbook on the indicators? Uh, being out. Uh, we expect, I think, the end of this year. Okay? I hope. Because it's a lot, it's a common work from a lot of projects. <laughs> and uh, uh, the prob not problem, the challenge is that uh, apart from the projects that initially started, and we initially started with all the projects, there are more projects added in the, in, in the, in the way. So uh, you do some work and then more are added, so you have to adjust, and then more are added, you have to adjust. So, thank you.